So hello everybody, it is Power Week, which means that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update. This time it is for February 2020 and they have released what probably will be the best feature for the year. And it is incremental refresh for pro licenses. Here's the thing, in this video, I'm going to show you what it is, uh, how to configure it. Uh, we will go and talk about what works, what doesn't work, what did you need to be mindful of, everything and anything you need to know. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so I have here a Power BI file that basically lists all the videos I have done and we're going to schedule refreshes, actually. You have this uh, available on my website. I'm going to link down below in case you want to search, okay? So before we start setting up incremental refresh, what is it? Incremental refresh basically allows you to, when you are refreshing a data set, get only new or modified data. Okay. What does it mean? Well, it means that the refreshes are faster. It will fade less often because it's less to refresh and the consumption is reduced. And it's reduced, you might say, okay, I'm not paying for consumption. No, but I mean, if we are mindful of the environment, it's a good thing. So make sure you set up incremental refresh, okay? There is no idea to refresh ginormous databases if there's no need for it. With that said, how do you configure it? And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go to transform data because to configure incremental refresh, you need to create two parameters with a specific name that is now um, reserved for this use. So to create a parameter, you go here, manage parameters, and you have to create two parameters. The first one is called range. They have to be called exactly like this, range start, and they have to be daytime. What do you put in current value? I was actually a little bit confused by this. You can put anything that is a daytime value. Then Power BI will work it out by itself for what I understand. So here I'm going to put, I don't know, my YouTube channel started in January, so how about that? And then would you put, because it's daytime, you have to put it in daytime format. So that would be one. And then we need to create another one, which is range end and spell it right, otherwise you will get in trouble. So there you go, then time. This is, I'm going to put, I don't know, uh, 2020. How about that? Okay. And then they will appear here once they are configured. Here we have them. And what we need to do now is apply those into our date column. Um, so if I go here, this is the list of the videos again on my YouTube channel. So this is the date that I want to uh, be able to have incremental refresh. So when I publish a video, okay. And what we need to do is to filter these with the parameters that we just created. So if you have a product sales, you will be the sale date probably or the last update date, if you share point, whatever it could be, right? So you go in here and you just daytime filters and then custom filter. Did I click it? Let's do it again. Daytime filters and then custom filter. And now we're going to configure those two parameters. Insert. I don't think it matters where on your query you put the, that filter. But obviously, the earlier that you put it, the better, because it will filter correctly from the beginning. I, I'm just guessing. So here you cannot have two equals. You can do is before or equal, and then is bigger or is bigger and equal of before. Okay, so otherwise it won't work. And you have to be very mindful with the parameters that are daytime. If you don't have daytime, and this should be daytime, because if that's not daytime, you're going to get into trouble. So is before, well, wait, 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 is before range end, and then is after or equal. So it has to be after our start date and before our end date. And again, equal should be just on one of these places. Click OK, and then it will grab the dates here, and then it will do, 
I thought I would have to do like today's date or something, but it, it for what I've read, it doesn't seem like it. It just just needs some sample, and then the Power BI service will work it out. But the, I guess the start date has to be correct. It's the end date that is not important. Just let me know anyhow if that's not the case. So once you've done that, you just close and apply. And while it loads, because there are so many videos, it takes a little bit of time. But don't worry, because we need to talk about certain things before while it is loading. Here's the thing. Um, how does this thing work technically in the background? Um, what it does is it takes your humongous table and it just partitions it. It means that it, it just cuts it in smaller tables, okay? And how it does that, Microsoft knows. But do you remember that I did a Power BI incremental refresh fake for Pro? That we did exactly that. We took a big table, we partitioned it, we saved it, and then we just had another table that refreshed. I will put the link down below. In case incremental refresh doesn't work, you can still use that. But what it does is it takes your big table, it divide it in, in the smaller tables and then it goes and looks, okay, has this changed, has this changed, has this changed? And then said, oh, only this one changed. Great, that's the one that I update, okay? So this is one of the first limitations of incremental refresh. This is how, what it says. It says it's important that the partition files that are pushed to the source system when queries are submitted for refresh operations. It means that to push filtering down means that the source, the data source should support query folding. So what it's telling us is that in order to do incremental refresh, the source should be the one managing the query so it can do the partitions. And depending on which source you are using, that might be possible or not. So are you using SQL and do you have a query folding? Incremental refresh is going to work without any problems. But if you're using, they have here some examples, flat files, blob, web, or data fill, data feed, it might not work. Why? Because the source, I mean, Excel is not going to be able to partition itself. A text file won't be able to partition itself. Right? It doesn't have that functionality. And if you have an SQL that doesn't have a query folding, and I have a video query folding, I'm going to link down below so you know how that works. But if you don't have query folding, it might work. But this is what is going to happen. It says here, it says, in such cases, the engine applies the filter locally, which might mean that it has to retrieve the entire table in order to do the partitions, in order to divide the tables in the small tables, and in order to make the query refresh, which basically means that you get zero advantage for incremental refresh. Does it make sense? So if your query is able to do the partitioning, the dividing of the tables in the source, if not, it might get slower with incremental refresh. So you need to just do incremental refresh and test it, okay? If it works, hallelujah. If it doesn't, go to the link down below, check the video where I show you how to do this manually and do it that way instead. Sorry, but that's the ugly truth. And it makes sense. How otherwise do you do incremental refresh, right? So how do you know, now that we have loaded everything, you go in here, and you need to do incremental refresh for each table, which I was quite surprised of, but now in hindsight, it might say like, okay, maybe it makes sense that you do this partitioning just on the tables that need to be partitioned and not everything, it will take longer. So this is the table that we want to do the incremental refresh, right click, click on incremental refresh, and this is what you get. And now it says here, unable to confirm if the query can be folder. It is not recommended to use incremental refresh with non foldable queries. That's exactly what I was telling you. My advice to you, ignore the warning, set it up, test it. And how do you know if it's incremental refresh or not? How long it takes to refresh. If it's faster, it's incremental refreshing. Otherwise, it is not. 
And it might be slower, then stop doing that and use my other method. You've been warned. Okay. Now, another thing, another limitation that you have is that once you deploy this to the Power BI service, it says you will not be able to download the file anymore because they are assuming that you're, you're doing this with gigantic files and you are not supposed to download gigantic files through the internet for a lot of reasons. So you will be locked in the service, basically. Hopefully you already have a Power BI desktop that you can reuse, so you don't need to, but your users won't be able to say, okay, I want to download this file. Okay? Now, what is the table that we want to do incremental refresh? We, I have only one table, so the video table, and then you toggle this on. If you are not able to toggle this on and off, it means that the parameters that you set up are wrong. So either it's a wrong spell, or it's not daytime, or whatever. If the parameters are wrong, you need to go back and do that, okay? This is working fine. And then here you have how to configure your incremental refresh. The first thing it says is how many rows do you want from your source? So for example, depending on what you're trying to do, for example, HR data, you might not have the, don't want data from 1998. Maybe you just want data from the last three years, for example. So here you will enter, I want data from the last three years. For me, I want all data, so I'm going to put 10 years. The next one is refresh the rows where columns is in the last. So that is basically, let me show you. When do you want to refresh? You can say, okay, I want to refresh once a week for the last seven days. I want to refresh every day for the last day. Whatever it is that you need, you put it here. I want to have every new day of refresh, so I put one day. But basically, I publish videos every three days, so probably that would be enough every three days. And then this is quite cool. It says detect data changes. It says only refresh date in the last three days if the publish ad column has changed. That means if there is a modification in that column or something has been added into that column, which is quite cool, right? So I said, absolutely, I want that. And then I just want to, I don't refresh if the day is not finished. It, in this case, for YouTube videos, it gives absolutely no value because it might not capture the actual refresh. So I want to have, wait for the day to complete and then refresh. Click apply all, and then publish to the web and you are good to go. How cool is that? Now, before I close the video, let me show you this. Um, if we go to transform data to know if your query has query folding, again, I have a video with all the details on what query folding is down below. So check that out. But just so you know very, very quickly without having to go there. Let's see if this loads. I'll show you how to check if your data has query folding or not. So if you right click, on the step, on the last step, you will see, why is it so slow? Come on, baby. You see here the view native query that it is uh, grayed out. It means that there is no native query re refresh. This is from an API, obviously. I, I, I don't think, I don't know if you will do the refresh, we'll see. But that's the way to know it. So you can go up each step and see if you broke your query folding somewhere, but everything is on the video I told you below. So go and check that out. Okay, so what is your favorite feature for this month? I'm guessing that is between the hierarchy and the incremental refresh, right? Okay, tell me down below what you think is the best feature for the 2020, February 2020, and I will see you again on Friday with another DAX Fridays. Until then, as always, take care and bye-bye.